Yeah, so hybrid cloud cost management and Morpheus. Um, I've got some samples pulled up for you. So I don't have very much slide work for this one. You guys are gonna kind of dive in and see some of the new costing stuff that Morpheus has done. Uh, like Brad said, we didn't really start here. This was kind of a, an ancillary feature set that Morpheus added to its product, but it's it's become a product in and of itself. It can do a lot of things um, that other cost management tools can do, like sync in your real-time cost data, pull in your invoices and, and back invoices from all your AWS Cloud Spend or Azure. Um, GCP is actually coming here uh, this next few weeks as well. Or even uh, apply metered costing from Morpheus monitoring, doing its discovery of your on-prem. So you can apply that same costing spend. Re really awesome for managed service providers in that sense. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and dive right in, um, given on time. Um, so firstly, uh, one of the cool things that Morpheus does provide is it does provide some analytic, analytic screens where you can actually look at your spend by group, by cloud, by tag. I um, mean, kind of see where that spend is, where a projected spend is. You can see your overall, like there's my Amazon spend, uh, there's my VMware demo cluster spend. Uh, so you can kind of get an idea uh, where your spend is going. Uh, one thing Morpheus also did, um, or what we did, is we also provided this new costing area. So we've actually generalized the data that comes from the public clouds and the on-prem into uh, monthly roll-up invoices. Um, what's awesome about this is if you've got a multi-cloud large enterprise and you've got a finance team and you want to track down spend by department or whatever it might be by tag, um, you can actually pull from Morpheus's API and get a consistent API for all the clouds. It makes it a lot easier to work with the data. Um, and Morpheus does a nightly update of that and provides projections. So for example, I can go to invoices. Um, and I can actually see that. So right here, I've got invoices and we have granular invoices and summary roll-up invoices. For example, I could say, hey, I wanna look at cloud level invoices. So I wanna say, hey, what's my AWS cloud spend? And I can actually look at that historically. Um, last uh, May, it looks like it was $8,470 um, that month. Um, right now, month to date in June, it's 4,000 projected to be six, um, probably cleaned up some persistent volume, uh, some not persistent volume claims, uh, some EBS volumes or detached volumes, things like that. That's a great use case for that in the AWS land. Um, I could look at this for Azure as well um, and actually see that spend in my projections. I can actually drill into these invoices and you actually see uh, a split. You know, what's my cost percentage by compute, by storage, by network, extra, or um, also memory and license can show up if, it's a, if it has any. Um, that kind of data will show up there. Um, I can also, if let me go back to the AWS one, because that one didn't have any, I can go into this one, I can see that same stuff, I can see a history of trend based on how far I backloaded it. So um, you can actually see this is pretty realistic, there was a bunch of uh, detached volumes in our environment that were cleaned up at one point, you can see that trend and spread over time uh, from your invoice data. I can also view uh, granular line items for this, this is a roll up by cloud. Now let's go back up. One other thing we can see here is we can see this by resource. So maybe I want to look at a specific VM or instance uh, in Amazon. Uh, so let me go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to say Morpheus, HA Elastic, and it should show up here. Here's Elastic 1A and here's the June invoice. You can scope to your billing period as well. You're starting in on the filter. And when I drill into this, you can see I'm actually projecting a 12% savings this month on this and with a cost history trend uh, down to 61. So I can see the cost and the projected. I can see a history of this. I can also see the line items of where that cost is, data transfer, box usage. Now, sometimes you see multiple here. There's actually a reason for it. Sometimes there's a usage um, or a, a rate change and that will cause that, but you get that granularity and that is updated nightly, which is really useful to see. All right. Now, now that we have all this data and it's generalized in this form, we can actually do some cool stuff on it, right? We can actually create some reports. Uh, so I can actually go, hey, let's look at, um, uh, I've got tons of cloud cost reports. Where's my favorite one? I'm not seeing it right now. Uh, I can do a cloud usage report. Let's just do cost. Application cost, I can do cloud cost, time series cost, here it is. So I can say, hey, I wanna do a time series cost. Let's look at AWS, but let's group by um, the service. You might've, this looks familiar actually to what you would see in the Amazon Cost Explorer, but I get this for all my clouds. Um, so I can group by the service. I can add other filters if I want. So you can chain those as well um, by tag, tag exclude rules, things like that. So it's going to go off and generate that in the background. And it's normally pretty quick. There it is. 
and kind of see what that looks like. Um, the time span here, it's just showing the last two billing periods, but you can see the spend, you know, on EC2 versus RDS versus S3 by service. And this grouping and pieing is completely controllable um, by those filters. So there's a lot of cool costing tools there. Now, not only do we have all this costing, one of the big things with self-service and the reason we have this is also budgets. Um, budgets are a little different in that they, they use estimates and things like that. But the way that works is, A, firstly, I can actually just create budgets and do budget tracking under um, costing. See, I can actually look at my AWS spend budgets and the trends and where I am. I can also um, a create a policy in our governance engine, for example. This is where you can create policies. I can say, hey, I want to do a budget policy um, right here. I want to give it a name. I can say, hey, don't let this user spend more than $120 a month. Um, I can actually scope it to a specific cloud or say maybe I want to scope it to, um, uh, you know what, I don't like our marketing people. Sometimes he's spending all the money. So I, I'm just going to scope it to Brad here. So um, now, Brad, uh, you can't provision anything beyond $120 a month. So um, that's done. And remind me to remove that later for your next demo. Uh, but that, that's kind of how that policy engine works. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff there as well with guidance. So not only are we, you know, giving you the visibility to this costing, we're allowing you to, to rein it in. And so Morpheus is able to use that discovery, that costing data to actually give you recommendations like uh, reserved instance recommendations we can pull for you for the public clouds. Uh, right sizing your VMs. Uh, maybe you've uh, provisioned the largest instance type in Amazon possible, but you're using a gig of memory. Um, we've actually had that happen with a customer and saved them a bunch of money. So um, these are things that we can track, or maybe we detect that it is literally idle and unused. We can actually recommend power schedules or shutdowns or things of that nature uh, with that guidance engine. Um, those are some of the cool uh, benefits you have uh, with the Morpheus costing engine uh, available out of the box. Does, Sorry, does David, have... just to... Oh, uh, uh, you go in a real quick question. Um, does this have insight into costs at like an entire account or subscription level, or is this only for things that have been deployed and managed with the Morpheus platform? It's everything. So not just, uh, things you've deployed and managed with Morpheus. So actually, um, let's, let's go back here and I can show you that. So that HA uh, Morpheus HA elastic was never deployed by this appliance. It was actually deployed in the account. And Morpheus actually, uh, when it pulls that billing report, um, if you got multiple clouds added for the sub accounts and things like that, it will actually aggregate that data into the sub accounts as well. So you can actually track your usage account ID spend um, across Amazon. Azure, we even integrate with the CSP pricing data as well. So if you want to tie in your CSP account, and actually accrue that costing data down into those um, sub accounts or sub subscriptions on the Azure side, you can do that as well from the master tenant. The same goes, I forgot one cloud we do support um, is also Oracle Cloud and Oracle Gov Cloud as well from the costing perspective. With the recommendations that it provides for, hey, you might be able to save money here. Um, mm -hmm. Some of those, are, they're going to be simplistic because they're not going to fully understand the architecture that I've, I've put. So some of them may look suboptimal on in isolation, but they might make sense in a larger whole, which the machine is unlikely to understand. Um, if it does, that would be magic. But can I go in there and say, yes, I know, don't tell me this anymore because um, unless something changes. Yes, um, you can acknowledge these. So that I don't these. have too much noise. Yep, yep. You, exactly. There's that ignore button. You can even act on them Lovely. as well. That's also a key point. Yeah. Um, you can Perfect. ignore them and act on them. You also can configure the rules as well. So if you want certain thresholds uh, to affect your right sizing type of stuff recommendations, you have full control of that. You can even uh, change how it's calculating it. So maybe I want to look over a 90 day period. I don't have any in this environment turned on for 90 days, but if you click these, that would actually show that up. We actually keep this pretty clean in this environment. So you won't see that here, but it'll actually change how it's um, heuristically figuring out uh, what those right sizing recommendations are. So, um, and one more question. Mm -hmm. Do you have any trend analysis? I mean, just a historical, and then you know, if you if you keep doing things this way, you will you will end spending. I mean, this this and this. Yeah. So you saw that projected costs. Um, we actually do that for your month to date, so we can actually show the trend from a, a month perspective. And then on your budgets, you can actually start to see that trend line and how that moves up and down um, for your annual budgets and things like that. You can also do three-year budgets too. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. In a cloud summary tab has some good, just basic. Yeah, that's a, that's a great example of things to show. Um, another thing I should mention is doesn't have to be compute resources that Morpheus discovers. We talked about, can we show costs for only things Morpheus provisions or discovery? Morpheus looks at that bill, and if there's something from you know, uh, Kafka services from AWS, 
we'll show it um, as, a, as a resource um, in the invoice bill data. So not only does it act as a way to um, show your costing, it actually acts as another layer of discovery um, for reining in some of that spend that you may not see um, otherwise. So it's very powerful. Uh, but yeah, this is a, an AWS account. Uh, you can kind of see there's, there's going to be some costing and budgets and trends like that. You can actually see service breakdown costs. You can see reservation recommendations, um, savings plan recommendations, um, things of that nature are all in the summary tab, which is really powerful. You can even extend uh, your guidance. Is there, well. is there some way to um, try the package out before purchasing it? I mean, is there? Morpheus? Yeah, we have a, a community edition that's actually been downloaded about 1,500 times at this point. Um, yeah, get in there, play around. We'd love, especially if you guys are doing any post CFD write-ups, um, just hit me a note and I'll, I'll make sure you have access. But if you do morpheusdata.com slash community, it'll, uh, it'll take you there. Uh, there's even some links to some self-paced training to you know, get more than dangerous on the basics. But. So, um, and then the other one is utilization versus cost. And this kind of ties into your right sizing. So since Morpheus is track, tracking the statistics of your VMs as well, it's a really great way to look at, hey, is this VM actually being utilized? Um, you can see there's a 60%, it's costing me a little bit, but these are not being utilized. And that's actually 100% true. It's literally sitting there as a test environment. So I could probably shut that down or put it on a power schedule. So you have some, some nice um, trend charts and things like that as well.